Arizona and Florida have both been in the national spotlight over abortion rights in recent weeks, but a CBS News poll finds other issues are more pressing for voters in those states. In the Grand Canyon state, the economy tops the list as Biden trails there by about five points. A majority of voters in Arizona also said the border was a major factor in their vote for president. CBS News Executive Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, joins us now. Good to see you, Anthony. Thanks for being here. So this has been a question that I've been wondering for the past several months now, because we know that uh, uh, in every instance that abortion rights have been on the ballot in states, it's passed. But this is different because we're in an election year. We haven't seen this yet. So um, I'm curious kind of how this has been weighing on Biden in Arizona. Well, I'll tell you, Caitlin, um, you saw those two numbers you said at the top, Florida and Arizona. Some folks thought maybe Florida could come into play if the abortion rights side of things spurred maybe more turnout, maybe people voting for that in Joe Biden. But so far, it's really about the economy. And then the other thing is in Arizona here, let me show you this, because immigration is really a bigger factor right now. And I'm going to start with this. Because it's not just about Joe Biden's policies, which a lot of voters tell us they think is too easy on migrants crossing the border. But look at how this breaks down with when you ask people, have immigrants to Arizona made life better, worse, no impact? You get a majority who now say that it's making life worse. And that's up from the summer of 2020. So there's been a change in perception there. I would also point out that while it's more split, it is split among Hispanic voters in particular. And what you're seeing there is the impact of inflation, of affordability, and I would add this, it's not just immigrants, but mind you, it's also a lot about growth. Um, people who say that they think people from the U.S. moving into Arizona have also made life more difficult, made life worse there. And that's a majority, too. And that speaks, again, to the idea of things becoming harder to afford there in, the, in Arizona. Caitlin. I mean, Anthony, there is so much going on in Arizona this time around. And it also was kind of the, the center for election denialism over the past few years after the last election there. We all remember those images. Um, I know you asked uh, voters about this looking ahead to November. Um, what did we see about potentially challenging the results? Well, I asked this because, as you say, Arizona was at the center of a lot of things, but also because we've consistently seen over these years so many Republicans who continue to believe Donald Trump's false claims, right, that the election was rigged, as he says. Well, take a look at this. A priori, going into this, we asked, well, what should happen after the results are counted this year? And you get Donald Trump's voters who are split with 47 percent saying that the results should be challenged if Joe Biden wins. Joe Biden's voters don't feel that way, but half of Donald Trump's voters do. And that has real implications for democracy if people in advance are not trusting the election system, Caitlin. Absolutely. And we are following all of that in other states as well. Anthony Salvanto, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And to discuss all of this, let's bring in our political panel, Megan Hayes and Matt Gorman. Megan previously served in the Biden administration as the White House Director of Message Planning. And Matt is a Republican strategist who served as a senior advisor to Senator Tim Scott's presidential campaign. Megan and Matt on Mondays is what I'm calling this segment. Thank you both for being here. Um, let's start with those numbers Anthony just mentioned. 47 percent of Trump voters saying that they are wanting to challenge the results if he doesn't win. Matt, I mean, we've been hearing Republican lawmakers, prominent Republicans being asked about accepting the results of this election. What do those numbers say to you? Honestly, not very much, because mm. quite, what I was looking more at was at the first part of his panel when he was talking about the issue set and how the economy, immigration is playing in the, the minds of voters. Right now, it's looking more and more likely that we, they won't have to worry about that because Trump, as of today, is looking like he's going to win. And what also struck me was the majority of those issue sets that he talked about that are above 50 percent in voters' minds, four of those three traditionally benefit Republicans, immigration, crime, the economy, you know, mm -hmm. What's rapidly happening is, you know, as we've said before, abortion is becoming a single issue, animating issue these past couple election cycles. Does immigration now at least match that or take some of the momentum away from that 
as an animating issue for, for voters. Yeah, uh, that, that's interesting, too, because, I mean, that's the biggest question I've had is, is whether this issue can convert voters to Biden's side. I mean, obviously, you both know better than anyone that voters have the capacity to think about multiple things at the same time. But, Megan, for you, I mean, looking at these numbers in Arizona, the idea that abortion, at least at this point, given that it's on the ballot there, isn't moving the needle uh, to the extent that I'm sure Biden would like. I, th I think you're right. I think we're also six months away. I think people aren't paying attention. I think that the Biden needs to capitalize on these Haley voters that are in the suburbs who are also going to be voting on abortion over immigration. But they're also the same folks that are worried about the economy. So there needs to be things done to, the, to improve the economy if, if I think that the president's going to move Arizona back in, uh, to keep Arizona in his favor. I mean, another big race in Arizona is the Senate race. So Arizona could help determine the presidency. It could also help determine who has control of the Senate. Um, Biden is behind by five points in Arizona, but Ruben Gallego, the Democrat, is ahead by several points ahead of Kerry Lake. I mean, Matt, as Republicans, I mean, you know these, these races well, as Republicans are looking at that. Um, what's the what's the concern there? As a trend, it looks like Biden is running considerably weaker than many of other Senate candidates across the country. What mm. we're seeing in Arizona, candidly, isn't necessarily isolated Arizona. You're seeing this with Biden losing in Pennsylvania, but Bob Casey winning in Wisconsin. Same thing with Tammy Baldwin and others. So mm. look, there is to be a lag. So in, in some ways, it might be even more concerning if you're Joe Biden, though. If you're the DSCC, you, all you need is one to lose, and you need to lose the Senate. So that, that you yeah. know. Arizona yeah. could be gravy, but if they're losing Montana or Ohio, that's still a problem. Yeah, West Virginia as yeah. well, likely to be Republican. I mean, Megan, is there is there any chance of like a reverse coattails for some of these? Yeah, I think so. And I also think the DS and, uh, you know, the DNC as well is going to be putting more money in here into the Senate races, which also mm. ultimately is going to help the top of the ticket. But I think that these issues like abortion are also going to help the Senate races because you mm -hmm. saw Carrie Lake flip back and forth when the, the ruling came down. Um, a couple months ago. And so I do think that the more money that are in the states, the more it's going to drive. And I do think that will help mm -hmm. Biden in the end. Um, I also want to ask about, um, obviously, I mean, it seems like every every day the president, of course, is facing protests over the his administration's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. We saw at Morehouse over the weekend, uh, uh, you know, an event, of course, to designed to drive black turnout um, or speaking at, at events designed to um, the protests weren't as, you know, explosive as we thought that they would be. But it is interesting, Megan, to me that every, it seems every time the president goes to talk about an issue, he is kind of overshadowed by this. So, I mean, I worked for him for several years. We were protested at every single event. There are protesters on the motorcade route. They are pro there are people who protest at every event who have been protesting him for years. This issue is, a, you know, he's in a really tough spot here. He's in a no-win situation. He's trying to do a lot for Gaza as well as, you know, holding firm to being an ally to Israel. So I do think he's in a tough spot in the policy. But also, I wouldn't call that seven people turning their backs out of 470 while he mm -hmm. spoke really a protest of any, like, magnitude. There, he probably had more of that driving to the airport today in Wilmington. <laughs> um, Matt, I have to ask, because you worked for uh, Tim Scott, he's been on the rounds doing interviews a lot, um, being asked about his you know, potential as being a running mate. I believe we have some sound from him over the weekend. I hear there's a debate in July. Um, if you're the guy moderating, maybe I'll be talking to you. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. All right. So we've seen Republicans kind of doing this open audition process for the former president. I mean, you saw this uh, last time around, too. Um, is how how serious is this, do you think? I think it's very, very serious. Right. He'd be a great pick uh, for VP. And look, I think we're speaking of the same sort of issue. African-American men are becoming a big battleground for both parties. We get in this. We went to a historically black men's college, obviously Tim Scott. I mean, watch 20 percent or so. If, if Biden gets or excuse me, if Trump gets above 20 percent, the African-American vote. That's very good shape for the unlocks places like like Florida and other states. So whether it's Tim Scott or fighting over uh, kind of the crowd at Morehouse College, speaking to the same thing, African American men are going to be pivotal. All right, Matt and Megan, thank you so much. We could talk forever about all of this, <laughs> and we will uh, at some point soon. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it.